In my recent shipwreck videos, we've been looking at more modern wrecks. Soviet submarines and USS Scorpion. For today, however, we'll be going a fair bit back in time. And for that matter, to something more in line with my old Curry wreck videos. Instead of looking at a wreck in the modern day, we'll be turning to the early 20th century. And to the first American battleship, which I can already hear the questions about based on the title. USS San Marcos isn't a battleship name, as those ships, Kearsarge aside, are named for states. This is true. Also, on a different note, I'm not entirely sure on the pronunciation. The Spanish one is San Marcos, but apparently the city in Texas, her namesake, is more like San Marcos. I'm sure a Texan or two will pop up in the comments to clarify on this subject. Regardless, this ship began her life as the first USS Texas. Her name was only changed to San Marcos or San Marcos to open that up for the much more famous battleship that just came out of dry dock. If you're interested in the full story of this ship, I do have a video that I'll link in the description. It's an interesting story in showing how the Navy of the 1890s had to make do with what it could get. The first Texas was an obsolete warship upon her commissioning. Not the worst ship out there, but certainly not the best either. Unsurprisingly, the battleship was reduced to station ship only a little over a decade after she entered service. Texas was commissioned in 1895 and became a station ship in 1908. With even this role ending in 1911, when Texas was relegated to target ship duty. Her name was stripped and assigned to the more famous New York-class battleship. Renamed San Marcos, the old battleship was towed out into Chesapeake Bay on March 21, 1911, where San Marcos was blasted to bits by gunfire from the newer pre-dreadnought USS New Hampshire. This wrecked the superstructure and riddled the ship with holes beneath the waterline, enough to sink the old battleship, albeit in shallow water. Shallow enough, in fact, that she would continue to be used as a target, first for a torpedo test on April 6, 1911. The next year, 1912, would see a cage, or lattice mast, fixed aboard the hulk. This was based on the design in use on the then-modern Florida-class battleship. San Marcos would be fired upon once more to test the durability of that mass design. After this, the rusting hulk would continue to be used as a target for decades to come. Eventually, though, the battered wreck shifted to being used as an anchor for canvas targets, more than her own hull being the target. This would last until 1940, when San Marcos succeeded in sinking another ship, by means of a cargo ship colliding with the Hulk, causing enough damage to sink the freighter. That was enough to convince the Navy that the ship was more of a shipping hazard than a useful target. As a result, explosives were placed aboard to demolish what was left of the superstructure and push the rest of the hull into the bottom. Interestingly enough, what remains of San Marcos is still there to this day. Of course, after decades of rust and all the target ship duty, there's not that much left. What little remains being generally off limits to divers due to concerns about unexploded ordnance in the area. Which does mean this video We'll focus on the wreck as she was, not as she is now. Not to say that isn't interesting in its own right. San Marcos is an excellent example of what naval gunfire can actually do to a battleship, or any warship for that matter. In this regard, let's start from a distance 
and then looking closer. It makes for a good comparison of the damage. From a distance, after all, you can't see as many finer details. At least partially, because by this point, the ship has largely settled on the bottom, hiding a lot of the hull shots. Instead, we get to look at the superstructure, including the empty gun turrets, which admittedly we'll see better in the next picture. That one is more or less the same view, but from closer in. Now, when looking at this, it's worth remembering that San Marcos is fundamentally a design from the late 1880s. She lacked much in the way of protection outside of the main belt. And on top of that, her armor was of the older Harvey Steel type. By the time we reach 1911, shell technology had long since moved beyond San Marcos's armor protection. You can see that pretty clearly here with a shell hole directly through the face of her turret. And later on with other shell holes we'll see closer in, as well as this picture of some of her armor put on display with shell holes through it. In any case, as we move back to the last picture, the interesting parts come in the superstructure. Here you can see the effects of the shell fire in stark detail. The collapsed funnel riddled with holes, and the mass that's been shot nearly in two here, as well as a chunk taken out of the other mass further down. This is a good demonstration of how a ship could be mission killed simply by shooting up the upper works enough. None of the visible damage here would sink San Marcos, but the ship would have been largely incapable of fighting back, especially with the damage to the turret. Then again, in high enough water, some of those shell holes could have caused flooding. It's not as easy to see unless you zoom in, but there's some clear damage to the side here, beneath the funnel where shell holes start to blend in with the portholes. The damage here is extensive, ranging from the superstructure right down to the waterline, including a rather large hole beneath the turret. There's not much else to see, however, so let's move to the next picture, which is also an earlier one. At this point, the ship has yet to sink. Her guns are still in their turrets as well, with the superstructure broadly intact, riddled with shell damage, certainly, but the funnel and mast have not yet collapsed. This photo was, as such, taken early in the testing when the wreck was being examined to see the results of the firing before she was shot up some more, with the most notable damage here coming to the hull. There's a couple large holes here that we couldn't see before, and more around the turret here, including three punching clean through the barbette. That is not pretty. If the ship had been loaded for battle, those particular hits would have been incredibly dangerous. But, of course, she wasn't loaded for battle. San Marcos was used to test the effect of naval gunfire on her armor and watertight integrity, as well as training naval gunners. There wasn't exactly a reason to keep powder or shells aboard. And when you look at this area closer in, it just drives that point home. The barbette area resembles Swiss cheese as much as anything else. There's at least five shell holes clean through the barbette. That I can count here. Others might be hidden below the water. And there's more damage to either side, although the turret itself is free of holes at this point. The conning tower above it, on the other hand, well, that looks much worse. There seems to be a shell hole clean through it here, while the light bridge structure above it has completely collapsed. Anyone serving up there would not have had a good day, let's put it that way. Just behind it, the funnel shows two notable impacts. One smaller one here, and a much larger one 
where you can see clean through the structure. You can see the other side of that shell hole here in our first look aboard the ship. As you can see, the exit hole is much rougher than the entrance, from a mostly clean hole to one torn out of the funnel. That's the same thing you see, admittedly on a much smaller scale, with bullets impacting a body. And, speaking of bodies and scale, we have someone looking at the blown out remains of the conning tower here. He gives a good sense of the scale of the ship, and the damage for that matter. That man looks like he could fit inside the damaged funnel. Both the funnel itself, and this shell hole further down here, where the metal has bowed out from the point of impact, taking a porthole with it. In the next picture, we see more evidence of that shell fire. This is a deck winch resting by the barrel of one of the 12 inch guns. This doesn't seem that impressive on first glance. However, citing the nav source page, this was actually blown over here from the other side of the deck. San Marcos had her main battery in an on echelon layout, one turret on either broadside. That would mean this equipment was knocked from its mounting and thrown across the entire width of the ship. When you look at the next couple of images, more of that raw power is apparent. From the scattered debris here, where the superstructure was damaged and blown out at the end, to the absolute ruin of the conning tower here. We saw it a bit with that sailor examining the damage. Without him in frame, it is much more apparent. We have the entire conning tower blown open. A shell seems to have detonated inside it, looking at this damage. This would not have been a safe place for the officers in the event of a hit like this. A one in a million kind of shot, admittedly, but a stark one. Meanwhile, the next couple pictures are less immediately striking. These consist of looks at the men examining the ship between the shellings. These don't show the major bits of damage, but they do show some interesting hits in the form of deck damage. Take this one for example. We've got a clear gouge taken out of the ship's deck right here. Notable enough to have an officer stand there staring at it. And then in the next picture, we see a couple more impacts like that one. These don't seem that impressive on the face of it, but they do demonstrate the very real risk of plunging fire. This risk is why deck armor became such an important consideration later on. San Marcos is littered with similar hits. We have a couple more here. None of these are particularly massive, but they continue to prove the point. It's why testing like this was a very useful thing. By seeing the impact of plunging fire on San Marcos, the Navy could plan around it on future battleships. That applies to the more traditional hull shots as well, of course. All of that said, by far the worst deck damage was amidships. We have a long gouge taken out of the ship, presumably by a shell that hit just high enough to punch through the side and then wreck the deck. The damage extends from the side here, straight through the superstructure, leaving a trail of debris in its wake. When you look at that damage from deck level, well, it looks more like the ship ran aground and split in two. Not that she was hit by a shell. I struggle to think of a more dramatic shell impact off the top of my head, obviously not including shell hits that blew a ship apart. San Marcos was blasted apart as I said earlier, and pictures like this make that very clear. That said, it's also one of the last pictures. There's only a couple left, with the next picture being from much later on. San Marcos with only the core of the superstructure left. This was very late in her life before the Navy blasted the rest of the superstructure into the bottom. There's not much to say, really, other than the complete destruction of the ship. 
which also applies to the final picture as well. San Marcos is completely gone at this point, with the remains hidden beneath the waves. A sad end, to be sure, but the ship did her job well. And in the end, that's all you can really ask for. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.